This video is sponsored by Pixel Empire. If you're trying to redecorate your room with high quality pop culture and gaming themed posters and art, check out the link in the description and use code ROBOCAST for 10% off your order. When I try to reminisce on all the games that I played growing up, there are always a few that specifically come to mind. Games like Spyro, Ratchet and Clank, Need for Speed, GTA, and Call of Duty are always the ones that I think of right away. But in the back of my mind, there's always one genre of game that somehow doesn't make it to the limelight. And that genre is the extreme sports genre. Titles like SSX, MX vs ATV, and of course Tony Hawk Pro Skater are some of the games that I played the most, but yet I never think of them. Whether it's the fact that these types of games have stopped being produced, or that they were overshadowed by $100 million AAA titles, it's still undeniable that they were amazing games. And while I played a large amount of these extreme sports games, the ones that I enjoyed the most were always the skateboarding ones. Pro Skater, Underground, Skate 3, Project 8, they all have a special place in my heart. There's just nothing that matches the feeling of hitting a sick combo on a Tony Hawk game, or falling every 12 seconds on Skate 2 because of how bad you are at it. These types of games were one of a kind, and it sucks that they've disappeared from modern consoles. Consumers today won't get to experience it like they did back when I was younger, and they're missing out on something truly amazing. So, in order to show how great these games really are, and to try to convince EA to make a Skate 4, because the 99,000 Instagram comments don't quite do it, I decided to go back and experience some of these old games for the first time in a while. Those experiences are what you're witnessing in today's video, where I revisit old skateboarding games in 2019. Since we're talking about skateboarding games, there's nothing more notable than the OG skateboarding games, the Tony Hawk series. With the initial games in the series being developed by Neversoft, these games were the first of their kind to become mainstream. There were a few notable titles before these were released, but again, these were definitely some of the most popular. The first Tony Hawk game, Tony Hawk Pro Skater, launched on August 31st, 1999. It was met with very positive reception, and was the third highest bestseller for the PlayStation in 1999. So, since obviously I had to start with a classic, we had to go back to where it all began. For me. So I started with Tony Hawk Pro Skater 4. Pro Skater 4 is arguably one of the best games in the entire series. Just like all the good Tony Hawk games, this one was developed by Neversoft, and not their ugly cousin Robomoto. It was probably the most well-rounded out of all of the games. Everything about it was great, and I was reminded of how great it was as soon as I loaded it up. Starting up the game, I was shown the amazing cinematic skateboarding intro that I hadn't seen in years. I honestly forgot how cool the intros were for these types of games. Even as a non-skateboarder, you really get a feeling for how awesome of a sport it is as soon as you see these intros. I decided to go with Bam Margera, because back when he appeared on Nitro Circus, I thought he was hilarious, and childhood me definitely would have chosen him. Pro Skater 4 is split up into 9 different regions, and as you progress, you unlock new ones. The starting area is known as College, and it's probably one of the simplest regions. Regardless, there are a ton of skatable areas in each of these regions, and College is still a pretty fun one. I was extremely rusty at first, and I was completely bombing every single simple trick. Triple heel flip? No. Kick flip? No. Grinding around the flagpole one time? Also no. But I was sure I'd become better as I played for longer. Getting into the gameplay, it felt as amazing as ever. When executed properly, there was nothing more satisfying than landing some unique trick combos and lines. It made me feel like a badass, and being able to land a crazy combination of tricks actually made it feel like I was good at video games for once in my life. Playing through the career hit me with some pretty good challenges at times, and I felt like there was a pretty good balance between difficulty and enjoyment. In fact, the way that Pro Skater 4 did their career was much different than the previous three titles. In this game, you're free to take your time, skate around, and explore as much as you want. You then go up to various characters around the map and talk to them if you're up for a mission. In previous titles, you had a set amount of time to find and complete goals, but there was a separate free skate mode to play the way I was playing. But the way they did it in Pro Skater 4 was much more enjoyable, and I like it a lot better. As you completed the goals, you would be rewarded with some money and a stat point. You can then use the stat points that you earn to upgrade specific skills such as air, flip speed, or rail and manual balance. Then, you can take the money and use it in the shop to change your clothes, get new boards, unlock special cheats, and a few other things. You have to be careful though, because two of the endgame levels require a decent amount of money to unlock, so if you didn't have enough, you better get back on the grind. No pun intended. I played for around 3 or 4 hours, and I enjoyed so much about this game. As I was about to close it out and move on to the next one, I vaguely remembered something. Cheat codes. In general, it seems like cheat codes are much less common these days. I remember back in the day I used to have this cheat code book that I would pull out, thumb through, and try to find special codes for whatever game I was playing. 
The ones for Pro Skater 4 were always different because they were specific words instead of a combination of buttons. So I looked them up and figured I'd give them a shot. And oh my gosh, doing this really brought back some memories. There was big head mode, hoverboards, low gravity, invisibility, and so much more. I used the unlock everything code to check out the levels that I couldn't afford, and then the real fun happened. Remember how I said in the beginning that I couldn't land any tricks and maybe I'd get better? Well, you bet I can do it now. You should have seen my insane cannonball pop shove it, pop shove it, triple kick flip, kick flip, kick flip, pop shove it, pop shove it, pop shove it, 540 shove it, kick flip, kick flip combo. I always knew I was a skateboarding god. Oh, and also I was invisible with moon gravity on a hoverboard in slow motion with flashing lights on in the background. Come on, there's nothing weird about that. I promise you, even without cheats, I could easily make it around the flagpole 145 times and then land a combo worth 13 million points. Like I said, I'm a skateboarding god. Or so I thought. Going over to the second game, Skate 2, I quickly learned that I wasn't as good as I thought I was. Skate 2, one of the most iconic and loved skateboarding games of all time, was released by EA and Black Box on January 21st, 2009. It was much different than the Tony Hawk games. It was much more realistic, with greater possibilities of what can be done within the game. I would say that it wasn't as arcadey as Tony Hawk, but it was still just as fun, for me at least. I did play Skate 2 a decent amount, but I spent most of my time on Skate 3. So, I knew what I was getting into with this game, it just wasn't fresh on my memory. Loading into the game, you're faced with one of the most interesting cinematic intros in any game. It's a live action intro, so it's not within the game. But these intros were always entertaining, and this one features you, the main character, being released from jail. And it shows off a bunch of professional skateboarders in the process. At the end of the cutscene, the character creation screen comes up, and you're able to customize your skateboarder. I decided to model my guy after my biggest inspiration in life. Oh, hi, Mark. I got to choose the design of my board, tweak some settings, and hop right into the game. So I played through the tutorial and quickly remembered why I liked the third skate game much better than the second. This is probably an unpopular opinion, but it's just my personal one. Anyways, my main problem with Skate 2 is that it felt clunky at times, especially when it came to getting off the board. Yes, I know, it's a skateboarding game, so it probably doesn't matter that much, but it was something that just bothered me. Because of this, it always felt like a chore to get up on the top of ramps and to other places that would allow you to hit some cool tricks. But other than this one thing, everything about this game was awesome. The storyline was really cool, the tricks were good, and it felt like it had a lot of charm. But for some reason, I couldn't really get into it like I did in the past. Maybe it was the fact that it took me 30 minutes to realize that a 360 pop shove it and a pop shove it 360 were two different things, or maybe it was the fact that I would end up falling way more than I should have. Who knows? But regardless of what my personal opinion was with Skate 2, it is undeniably loved by tons and tons of fans. It has an 84 on Metacritic and is definitely a cult classic when it comes to skateboarding games. The map in Skate 2 is great, and I'd even say that it's slightly better than Skate 3. Plus, the game is a bit harder. In fact, one of the main negatives in a lot of the reviews of the game was that it was considered too hard for casual gamers. I don't really consider myself a casual gamer, but I do have to say it was a pretty challenging game. A lot of the challenges take quite a few tries to complete, but it does make it more satisfying than it being easy. For example, there was a challenge where I had to own the spot at a place called Razor's Edge, and it seemed like an easy challenge, but it took me quite a while. If I was good at this game, I probably would enjoy it a little bit more. Maybe even as much as I enjoyed the next title, Skate 3. Skate 3 really hits home for me. It was one of my favorite games on the Xbox 360, and it was the one that would make the Skate franchise as popular as it is today. If you don't believe me, seriously, look at EA's Instagram comments and see how many people want there to be a Skate 4. Anyways, this game was a true masterpiece in my opinion. There were a huge number of unique tricks, they fixed the clunky off the board mechanic and made it a lot smoother, interacting with the environment was fixed, and the graphics were outstanding. The only real negative with this game compared to the second game was that the map was split up into regions instead of being one continuous map. Some people may not care about this, but it was super cool in Skate 2 to be able to ride from one side of the map to the other. Regardless, every other aspect of this game truly shines. Just like the previous one, there was also a live action cutscene in the beginning of the game. I personally like the one in Skate 2 a bit better, but this one is just as weird and interesting. From there, you're brought into a game as a guy who is trying to start his own board company and sell some boards. That's the main premise of the game, and every goal you complete gets you publicity and allows you to sell more and more boards. The goals would range from getting some sick shots for a magazine, or getting some sick shots for a video, or competing in competitions that you restart until you win because second is unacceptable. Landing a trick felt amazing, and it's one of the most satisfying experiences out of any of the skateboarding games I've mentioned. The best, though, was when you mix it up with a nice combo and grind. Literally nothing on earth beats that. 
The map was pretty good, and it would be a lot better if it wasn't split up into sections. But there was a big variety of scenery and areas to explore. You could go up to the hills if you want to get some speed and try your best at surviving the mega park, or stay down in the city for some unique spots. Plus, if you got bored of the main map, there were tons of community maps that you could play on. On the real though, it was pretty hard to get bored on the main map. There were so many contests and challenges and places to explore that I enjoyed it for quite a while. One of my favorite types of activities to do was to do one-up challenges against professional skateboarders. It was basically like playing horse and basketball, but with skateboarding, and instead of horse, the word you had to spell was one-up. And you don't have to do the exact same thing as the person before you. Okay, maybe it's not like horse. My first one-up challenge was against Joey Brzezinski, and the goal was to score more points than him on each individual run. Every time you scored less points, you spelled part of the word one-up, and whenever you finish the word, you lose. But the good thing was, he was garbage. I mean, it was the first 1-up challenge in the entire game, and I was on easy, but man, he definitely doesn't look like a professional skateboarder in this situation. He literally lost to a random dude off the street named Wang. Don't ask, okay, I thought it would be an interesting name. But the game went on for a while until eventually I won and decided to do something else. So I hit up a competition, won that one too, and went up to the spillway to try to make it all the way down without falling. Something about getting a lot of speed in this game is super fun, and I spent a lot of time doing just that. When I wasn't doing that, I was too busy falling at every possible point in the game. Something about the physics in this game were just hilarious, and wiping out cracked me up every time. I ran into trees, curbs, benches, sidewalks, nothing, other people, and about anything else you can think of. But for some reason, it was still hilarious every single time. I don't even know the last time that I played a game and got so much enjoyment out of it. Nothing really compares to the feeling that these old skateboarding games gave off. It's a feeling of pure excitement and passion for every aspect of the game. I mean, I wasn't sitting there worried about if it would have a ton of microtransactions and if the developers would deliver upon launch. I honestly think these were some of the last good years of EA, because while yes, there's always been a little bit of controversy with them, this game doesn't have a lot of it. It's a genuinely great community, and it's a game that I wish there was a follow-up for. Maybe with Session coming out in the near future, EA could finally think about making a Skate 4. There's obviously a demand for it, so we'll have to wait and see how it goes. Do you think there'll be a Skate 4 in the future? Let me know in the comments. Anyways guys, that's going to be it for today's video, so I hope you guys enjoyed. Revisiting old games and reflecting on the nostalgia is one of my favorite things to do these days. It's a great experience, and something about it feels different than playing modern video games. So what better way to show off nostalgic stuff than by buying some awesome pop culture and gaming themed posters and art from Pixel Empire? Pixel Empire is your one-stop shop when it comes to decorating your room with unique movie and gaming themed artwork. They often do limited time releases for specific posters, and it's definitely worth checking out. For example, they just released these Vice City prints, and they are some of the coolest looking designs I've seen on any site in quite a while. If you're interested, I'll put a link down in the description below, and make sure to use code ROBOCAST for 10% off your order. I have this awesome Nintendo Inkblot set, and it is by far some of my favorite posters I've ever owned. Everything they make is complete fire, so like I said, feel free to check out their website, that'll be linked below. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching, I will see you guys next time, and peace.